Hey guys, welcome to another radio video and this is in uh, the uh, spirit of continuing the uh, HF amateur radio bands. So today we're talking about the 10 meter amp band. It's a pretty big band, it's from 28 to 29,700 megahertz or 28,000 to 29,700 kilohertz. And um, it's personally my favorite band of all. I've always loved 10 meters um, and um, for multiple reasons. The biggest drawback of the 10 meter band is because of its very high frequency in the HF spectrum. Um, unless solar activity is high, there isn't much to, uh, to do. You'll maybe hear some local hands talking a little bit like a, uh, you know, the uh, 27 megahertz CB band, just you know, line of sight. Um, it is very dependent on solar flux and solar activity. So unless we are in a high state of solar activity, it doesn't propagate necessarily very well. But uh, even in low solar activity periods, it's really worth it to tune around you never know what you can hear and uh, one of the phenomenon that happens quite often on this band is what we call sporadic e-skip which uh, can give this band a uh, all night um, working range of up to you know a thousand two thousand kilometers away for example here in the uh, early summer from June July uh, we often have patches of sporadic e and uh, well, you know, it can be midnight and you'll hear stations from down in Florida, Alabama, Texas. Um, I love this band because you never know what you can hear. And we are at the peak of solar activity right now. And what's cool about that is that this band is pretty much open every day. And it's been open every day for the past few months. Um, and what's nice is probably the best qualities of this band low noise so it's because of its higher in frequency it has much less noise than the other bands and um, AM radio operators can use really low power and still be heard across the world now because of its high frequency um, most of the time it's a daytime band from sunrise to sunset and um, unless there is what we call sporadic e-skip it usually isn't open at night but you might hear local amps though chatting around um, so you know tune around you never know and sporadic e-skip um, even though it's more uh, prevalent in, um, in North America in June July and a little bit around December um, actually sporadic e-skip can happen any day of the year you never know when it can happen it's really nice so uh, daytime band mostly but very very nice um, most of the communications here are in upper side band but of course we'll uh, go around the band and show you a little bit what the different signals are uh, I don't know if we'll hear many signals it's uh, about midday here noon which is uh, 1700 UT and we'll try to see if we can hear any signals at this time. So the first part of the band, I'll tune around in CW because the first part is going to be Morse code. Let's put it here. signals because of the nature of the 10 meter handband um, you rarely hear signals that are very close uh, most of the time you'll hear signals that are very very far away so this is a great band for the exiting countries far away so the first few stations in Morse code shows us that the band is actually open. Um, around 2070, I'll switch usually to upper sideband. 
because here we now have digital modes that can happen this is a JT65 digital mode 28076 radio teletype so the band is definitely open uh, 28100 to 28150 usually has uh, some CW signals also uh, mostly amateur radio stations that are slower in speed on their CW or Morse code we also have part of the band I would say up to 28300 you'll have lots of beacons and this is nice because the beacons let you hear from where propagation is actually working so maybe we'll hear some beacons here there's one well, this is a beacon the beacons on the 10 meter handband are uh, spread all over the world a lot of them in the United States but they're really spread all over the world and what's cool is that you can actually take a list on the web there are a few lists of beacons and uh, you can compare the beacon where from the from what region the beacon is and then um, you'll know that from that area to your own uh, propagation is working on a 10 meter handband which is cool and it's a great way to learn Morse code because you can listen to these Morse code signals and trying to ID their um, call letters is a great way to actually learn some Morse code. They're spread all around from 28150 to 28300. Another one here. They're often very weak, a few watts only. Beacons are also a great way to understand or to know if propagation is working on 10 meter handband. And here starting at 28300, well I'll stay an upper sideband for some uh, sideband signals. I should go faster a little bit. activity at this time Charlie 5 station from I believe from Ecuador than others. Weekends are often more active on 10 meters and of course when there's uh, contests. Um, on 29 megahertz you can switch to AM mode. From 29 to 29 150, 29 200 you'll often hear AMers that enjoy talking in that mode on the uh, 10 meter band. And then the last part of the band, not all receivers actually can do this mode. 
but if you have FM on your shortwave receiver most stations at the 29300 up to 29700 are in FM mode One of the areas that's cool is also 29600 to 29700. There's a lot of amateur radio repeaters in FM. And uh, if you stand on one of the frequencies of uh, either 620, 640, uh, 660, and 680, chances are you will hear at some point a uh, repeater. I don't know if it's still active, but I remember a few years ago. Here, here's one. It's not very strong. Sometimes it's stronger than that. I remember, like I said, 29660. A few years ago, had this really amazing receiver in the Virgin Islands, and um, I remember back then, even with a small scanner that goes up to 29660 in FM mode, I would hear it with the little telescopic antenna uh, almost daily. That's the typical uh, 10 meter amateur radio band. One of my favorites and one that you should actually try if you uh, want to have uh, when propagation is good and uh, especially in the weekends. Uh, you hear stations from all over the world. Um, here in the mornings, uh, Eastern North America where I am in Montreal, in the morning from I would say local time from uh, 9 to uh, about 1 p.m. Uh, that's equivalent to 14 to 1800 UT. I will very often hear lots and lots of European stations on the 10 meter band, and I really like that. Um, logging all countries of Europe, which is pretty cool. So that's the uh, 10 meter band. Why not tune around and uh, don't forget if you're about midday or um, you know late late morning, midday, early afternoon. Why not take a listen? One uh, little fact here, since it's a daytime band, the path from the station to your area usually needs to be in daylight. So you can understand that the path from you to the stations will change as the day goes on. For example, here in Eastern North America, in the morning, the daytime path goes up to Europe. So we'll hear stations from Africa, Europe, and as day progresses, then we'll get more local into stations from South America, for example, because we are in the full daylight. Europe, you know, in early afternoon here, Europe gets into darkness, especially in the winter. So we'll uh, hear stations, I'll hear from Montreal stations, uh, South United States, Caribbean, South America, and then as day progresses, since the daylight is more to our west, then we'll hear stations from the west coast, California, um, here maybe British Columbia, Canada, uh, Alaska, and Pacific, Hawaii. So it's really, really interesting to uh, listen in regularly during the day and see the stations and get acquainted with the areas you hear depending on the time of day. Uh, which is pretty cool. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, cool little video on the 10 meter amateur radio band and 73.